The Darkling Thrush by Thomas Hardy, 1840-1928 I leant upon a coppice gate when frost was spectre grey and winter's dregs made desolate the weakening eye of day. The tangled bindstem scored the sky like strings of broken lyres, and all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires. The land's sharp features seemed to be, the century's corpse outlent, his crypt the cloudy canopy, the wind his death lament. The ancient pulse of German birth was shrunken hard and dry, and every spirit upon the earth seemed furtherless as I. At once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead, in a full-hearted even song of joy illimited. An aged thrush, frail, gaunt and small, in blast re-ruffled plume, had chosen thus to fling his soul upon the growing doom. So little cause for carolings of such ecstatic sound was written on terrestrial things afar or nigh around that I could think there trembled though his happy good-night air, some blessed hope whereof he knew, and I was unaware. Okay, this is by Thomas Hardy. Um, Thomas Hardy is uh, a, ve a very famous Victorian author, although he, he actually considered himself primarily a poet, yeah, but he's best known for his novels like Far From the Madding Crowd, The Mayor of Casterbridge, Tess of the D'Urbervilles, okay? Um, but he himself, he considered himself to, to be a poet. So let's see, what's this poem about? Well, look at the title, The Darkling Thrush. Okay, this word darkling mean it means dark dark or to darken to become dark and um, this word um it's used by milton in paradise lost by uh keats in ode to a nightingale by matthew arnold in dover beach yeah um so i think the title is almost following on in the uh, long history of uh, british poetry so what's this about? Well, I think this is about being depressed, being sad, feeling down when things are difficult and the fact that things may not get better, but hope always exists. Yeah. And there is always hope. And hope is one of the uh, great Christian values, faith, hope and charity. Yeah, so hope. There is always cause for hope. You can hope that things get better. And effectively, it tells the story of somebody who's out in the countryside at winter. In, and uh, this person is looking at the landscape and everything is grey. I think this person feels very down and depressed. And in that, they are reading... Um, their depression in the landscape yeah it's a winter's day it's cold the sky's going um the plants are are di have died um and everything is midwinter and then suddenly this bird a thrush appears and it starts singing with all its uh, might and this thrush itself represents hope so I leant upon a coppice gate when frost was spectre grey. So, coppice. Um, to coppice. Well, a coppice is like um, a line of trees. To coppice is actually you cut the trees down near to, near to the base and you get long thin sticks. But effectively this is a fence. So, I leant on a gate near a coppice. coppice and 
Uh, it was frosty, it was cold, yeah, and everything around me was grey. And winter's dregs made desolate the weakening eye of day. So the dregs are the thing that are at the very end, the dregs of a bottle of wine, the dregs, the lowest thing, the residue, the sediment, yeah? Um, and clearly, the, the what's left alive in winter looks desolate. And day, day is going, the light is fading, the weakening eye of day. Um, so... Clearly here everything is very grey, he's very depressed, spectre grey, dregs, desolate, weakening eye. The tangled bind stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres. So a lyre is a musical instrument, as I was corrected the other day, uh, rather, li rather like a forerunner of the guitar. Bind stems, bindweed or convolvulus, this is a plant that uh, is a climbing plant and you'll see the stems going up. And here there is uh, a simile between these stems of this climbing plant going through um, the branches of the trees. And this looks like the, the strings of a broken instrument or a broken musical instrument. And I think this is an image, the whole thing's like a metaphor for um, the opposite of harmony, yeah? Things are, are bad. And all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires. So any man, any human that was in this area that haunted nigh, that haunted that place, that lived in that place, had gone inside and was warming themselves by a fire because it was cold. So notice this word haunted. Yeah, haunted, very negative. Yeah, it's got the, the gives the idea of death. Um, look at this. Stem scored sky. S -s -s. Okay, a bit of alliteration there. The land's sharp features seem to be the century's corpse outlent. So the features of the landscape, the shape of the landscape, the mount, the hills and the shapes of the trees, they looked like the corpse, the dead body of the century, which is leaning out towards him. Okay, so the century's corpse, the dead body of the century that has passed, an outlet leaning out, leaning towards him. Yeah? So again, centuries corpse outlent. This is it sounds very depressed. His crypt the cloudy canopy, the wind, his death lament. So the place that the last century has been buried, the crypt, is the sky sky over above, which is probably grey, and the wind whoosh, is the song of death, the lament for the last century that's dead. So again, a very negative and depressed outlook. The ancient pulse of German birth was shrunken hard and dry. So the pulse of German birth, this is spring, summer, autumn, winter, a germ to germinate, to open and to grow. But we're now in the middle of winter and this is the low point of the season and all life is hard and dry and cold and frozen. Every spirit upon the earth seemed furtherless as I. So fervour is great energy, enthusiasm. So everything on earth had no enthusiasm, it was apathetic, yeah? And notice a spirit, a dead spirit, it's talking like a ghost. So here it's alluding to death, the death lament, yeah? This is how he's feeling and he's interpreting the landscape to match his, uh, how, he's f how he's feeling. And then suddenly the poem changes. Once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead. 
So suddenly he heard something. A voice arose. There was a voice. Yeah, and this is the thrush. Um, there were and the bleak twigs, the branches or the ends of the branches, which had no leaves on them, and they looked bleak. They looked depressed. In f a full-hearted, even song of joy, illimited. So there's suddenly a song of joy, of unlimited happiness. And clear, clearly, hope is this joy. Yeah, this is um, this thrush, which we're about to see, which is a bird, is the um, personification of, um, of hope. Yeah, an aged thrush, frail, gaunt and small, in blast beruffled plume. So this thrush, it's quite old, it survived to here in winter and maybe it could soon die, but it's singing anyway. It wants to sing, it's being happy, it's singing for the joys of life. It's frail, easily broken, it's gaunt, it's thin because there's no food, and it's small, and its plumes, its feathers, are ruffled and it looks scruffy, it doesn't look very good um, because its feathers have been effectively attacked by the wind, attacked by the winter. But it's still singing because it has hope, it's hope for spring to come. And this thrush had chosen thus to fling his soul upon the glowing gloom. So it's getting darker and darker, the growing gloom, again, growing gloom, alliteration. And this, this thrush, despite the fact that everything was dark, gloomy and depressed, this thrush was opening his soul to happiness, to the happiness of hope to come, of hope to survive the winter. So little cause for carolings of such ecstatic sound. So, a carol, a Christmas sat carol, a celebration. So, there was no reason for this um, thrush to sing and to sing with such, and to make such a beautiful sound. Yeah? So, there's, he could see no reason uh, was written on terrestrial things afar or nigh around. So everything around them, the earth was depressed, it was cold, it was bleak, it was dark, darkening, it was a darkling world, yeah? But the thrush wrote on it its happiness, its hope. That I could think there trembled through his happy good night air, some blessed hope whereof he knew, and I was unaware. So this sound that came through um, through the darkness and depression, this is like hope coming through against a bad situation. You hope that things are going to get better. Yeah, and hope is going to be the saviour. And in the thrush, he could hear that hope existed and the thrush knew that there was hope. But the person who's looking, he didn't know about this. He didn't know of any reason to be happy because he was unaware of it. But the um, thrush was proclaiming that hope existed. Yeah. And don't be so depressed because hope is always there. So enough. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye for now. The Darkling Thrush by Thomas Hardy